Hello there once again, it's your old pal Locke the Bounty Hunter, and on today's very special episode, we are going to be taking a look at one from the It's Complicated channel, one of my absolute favorite channels on all of YouTube, Free Love, and that is a concept that terrifies me because if love is free, then there must be something rotten with it. Gentlemen and gents, the link for this channel is down below. Check him out, give him a like, give him a subscribe, share this channel because this man is truly worthy of the oven fresh bread of the intergalactic space god wobble chart all hail i do not want to waste any more time so without further ado let's dive right in shall we what is the difference between today's hookup culture and the free love movement of the 1960s a better soundtrack I mean, you couldn't beat the vietnam soundtrack if you tried let's see they had better watch bands better taste in fashion they at least made a vain attempt to, to mask their promiscuity with some form of spirituality and well i will give modern women credit the smell is better nowadays with modern hookup culture oh um, basically, uh, um, all guys want now is uh, coochie, and nobody wants that like real romance. Nobody wants real nothing, love nothing. Ever. They didn't want real romance or love in the 1960s. True, the romance and the gentlemanly behavior was an old world ideal that was brought forth from World War II. By the time the 60s came around, the whole romance and courtship thing went out the window. That was a thing of the establishment. That was for squares, man. My God, we're off to a rough start, aren't we? Thing. And it's sad, it's sad. It's That's really the whole sad. point, it's sad. No, what is said is how you base your worth out of the number of bodies that you accumulate. And I don't even think you can spell the 60s, let alone talk about the culture. I feel like the- Oh my God. Oh my God, she found a time machine, didn't we? We are doomed. Free love movement in the 60s, it was more about love and loving everyone. And now, hookup culture, it's more about lust. And basically just, you know, what can you get? And judging, and I don't know, I feel like freedom of love was more beautiful in the 60s, and now it's, I don't know, it's about what you can get and lust. In the 1960s, I'll tell you what, I was at Haight-Ashbury, the summer of love, 1967. This is absolutely glorious. This is why I love this channel. Before I got shipped overseas, and it was the coolest place. Everybody was cool. Everybody was laid back. Everybody was loving. I mean, uh, the women were awesome. They didn't care who you were. If, if you just wanted to sit and talk, they would. The guys. Just so long as you weren't a vet. If you weren't a vet, they totally loved you. I honestly wish, like from what I heard, San Francisco back in the 60s was kind of cool before the hippie movement became mainstream. It was also a very bizarre mirror world because from what I heard, San Francisco at that time was incredibly cheap. If you do the same thing, if you didn't have anything, they'd give you something. And today's culture, everybody's hooking up. They're looking for, they're looking for love, but they're not finding it. We had it. They are not looking for love. They're looking for fun. That is the biggest difference. We, everybody loved everybody. And it was very, very, very cool. And that was the best summer of my life. You know, so uh, if we can go work Generation X, that means we don't give a shit. But, <laughs> but in 1967 at Haight-Ashbury, I slept in a park that night with a whole bunch of people and everybody got stoned except me because I don't do that. But, uh... Right. And also, on a side note, is anybody else hypnotized by this guy's teeth? And we had a wonderful, wonderful time and just talking about every little thing. We weren't, we weren't trying to fix the world. We weren't trying to hook up with anybody. And if, if you saw somebody you liked, you say, hey, baby, come on over here. And she just walked right over there. You know? So... Okay, here's what I don't get. You were saying that you weren't trying to change the world, but one of the biggest fundamentals of the counterculture movement as a whole was trying to prove to the establishment that you didn't need them, that all you needed was love, and you tried to convince the government to end the war in Vietnam because of love and some other parts of the ideology as well. I am paraphrasing this to a bastardized degree, but if anything, the hippies were trying to change the world. They just did it in the laziest and smelliest way possible. 
stupid hippies. How did we go from that movement to today when women need to be compensated for their time and attention? In other words, we went from free love right. to pay to play transactional. Right. Feminism. That's what happened. It's uh, because social media said that's what they should have. So they grew up with a sense of entitlement and they want, it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you, I'll, I'll, you know, but you're going to buy me dinner and you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Because men think that they rule the world and they can have it all while making women slave under them. So I need to be compensated for everything that I do. All right, how's this for compensation? I'll give you three cents to shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. You know, on second thought, I need that money for something else. You're not worth it, sweetheart. How did we go from love and friendship to game, seduction, and manipulation? Because that's what men deserve. <laughs> women, because women, I feel like, are a lot, very entitled these days. I feel like their standards are way too fucking high, for sure. They, they, turn, they turn into money mongers, and now it's all about the money. You know, they don't care about the people anymore. They just want money. Sad but true. Modern women love to measure their value in monetary units as well as the possessions that they own. They do not actually care about the feelings of other people. But that is because modern women are incapable of feeling. That's just how it is. Pay her. Pay for that girl. Why did the women of the past God. care less about money when they were more dependent on a man for money? I it was because of traditional ideals. It was because of the traditional ideals that still spilled over from the uh, greatest generation after World War II. There was still that need for love, connection, and community, especially when you had all of those men coming back from war. So there was still that old world ideal, but that was a long time ago. Those ideals have died, or at least they have been corporatized. I'm gonna keep using that word. I think because there wasn't as many opportunities for women and I think um, it was normalized like women were meant to have a family, birth kids, cook clean and they didn't work but now that we're more in an independent society women are expected to work and provide for themselves so Here's a question I would legitimately love an answer here I'm not trying to be condescending when I ask this So what? What's wrong with that? What is wrong with taking care of a family? Why is it so much better for you to go out and work a job that you absolutely hate to raise for a family that you never see, feed them food that is going to poison them and ship them off to a school where they will be indoctrinated into a militant ideology? Why is it better for you to work and to earn your own money instead of nurturing the next generation of kids who are going to go and be the future of this country? Why is that an issue? I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm legitimately curious. I have yet to hear a logical argument. They're doing it any way that they can. Women are just more vocal about maybe what they want from a man. So like if it Translation, women don't know how to shut up. I said it, I'll says it again if I have to, I have no regrets. It is money or gifts or something. They're probably, I feel like, just being out front now rather than back in the day, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we just more up front now. Women now are just more vocal and they're surrounded by more women themselves. They were probably just surrounded by, you know, their fathers, their brothers, their husbands. So they didn't have somebody to share, to talk to, you know. But look what you've done with the voice that you claim that you have. You now are forced to work incredibly hard in an economy that does not treat you very well. You're lonely, you're medicated, and you're miserable. What good is the voice that you used? Why didn't women of the past all think they were queens with delusional dating requirements for men? Because other because social media gave them an overinflated sense of self-worth. The connection of the internet made women think that they deserved a higher caliber of man that was outside of their league. That's pretty much it. It was digitalized brainwashing to a catastrophic degree. Their women put that in other women's head, not realizing that's their standards, not yours. Sad but true. How could this be considered female nature if it's changed? 
women have a natural sense of hypergamy that is just basic biology right there the thing is is that it has been magnified and promoted to an artificially high degree that's why we're in this mess because it's been over inflated to an incredibly dangerous degree because it's not i don't think all females are the same personally i don't think it's their nature at all i don't think none of the behavior of right now today is their actual nature I, I think the nature in itself is inherent i'm not trying to say that all women are evil because they're not that's literally impossible however women do have a biological desire to try to find the best mate possible they want somebody that's going to provide them with the proper genes needed to make the best possible offspring in order to do that there needs to be a certain level of security there that's just that's nature the problem is it's just been overinflated. that's the long and the short of it i think it's new habits and new nature from the new uh way that they live life evolving and things like that but i don't think this is natural at all i don't think they've ever been de delusional i think a woman wants what she wants and if it's money and a successful man then it'd be that if it's someone that just you know does the bare minimum makes her happy then it's that i think so why is it that we put such a huge emphasis on what the woman wants? The woman wants this. The woman deserves that. However, when a man just says, well, I want this, they are told to shut up and that they're being misogynistic and hateful and all of these other things. I think all women have always thought differently throughout time. It's just a lot of more women can communicate their opinions and the ones that are very strong willed and out there and outspoken are the ones that want more. I'm sorry, but that's not a strong will. That is an overbearing sense of entitlement. There is a difference. You know, if you are a man and Yikes. you are broke, you should be embarrassed and you should be doing everything in your power to get up in the morning and get rich. You want to know? Let's do a little. If you are a woman who walks around with a neck tattoo, you should be embarrassed if anybody wants to breed with you. If you are walking around the streets of Vegas drunk, sporting a chest tattoo while wearing bunny ears, then you're just proof that society has no hope and we just need an asteroid to come in and start over. I said it. I'm, I'll repeat it if I have to. Little analogy, right? Crackheads, they wake up in the morning and they will do everything in their power to smoke crack and get tweaked out by the end of the night. So if you are a man and you're broke and you do not get up and think oh wow i need to do something to make money today you are pathetic because even a crackhead could do it so well by that logic a crackhead will rob people hurt them break and enter into places shoplift and cause all sorts of chaos just to get enough money to get a fix from his friendly neighborhood crack dealer that's a crippling addiction as opposed to a man who's doing the best he can to survive in a world that has set every single obstacle in his way you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about because for some reason guys are stupid enough to hand you things on a silver platter. The only thing I'm willing to serve up to you is a middle finger. You're actually just your destiny then. So then a crackhead's smarter than you, so you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Crackhead's smarter than her. I think because getting married to somebody was probably just really common. You find someone, you say you love them. Maybe you do truly love them and you just get married. Times are different. Why wasn't slut shaming an issue during the free love movement of the 1960s? Um, I well, if we're being perfectly honest here, the establishment at the time was hypercritical of the free love movement and did call the hippies out for their promiscuity. That did happen. I feel like because there wasn't a lot that you can do in the 1960s i mean like you could do more in the 60s and f like that's the thing that's what these idiots don't realize previous generations had way more to do if you're bored now you have the internet that's about it but back in the 60s there wasn't any internet there wasn't a whole lot of tv you went outside you interacted with people you played sports you learned an instrument you did something maybe wear a short skirt i feel like now like things have changed you wear short skirts what in the he double hockey sticks are you talking about woman a lot and you can show a lot and get away with it so slut shaming has become more normal but i mean it's not okay like i feel like everything has become normalized like you should just be able to be yourself and wear nobody's going to accept you for your body count sweetheart don't even try ever wear whatever you want i feel like social media i feel like really social media is like everybody has their own opinion and on social media on our phones we can communicate it um back then people had their opinions but they weren't able to like really 
butt into other people's lives as much as we can nowadays. That's because other people's lives are none of your business, sugar. I can tell by your nose ring that you think you have a lot of important things to say, but trust me, sister, you really don't. So why do people insist that things will never change when history has proven that things have already changed? Yeah, oh, yeah it's changed a lot. I don't like it. You know, I'm out here doing my thing for the veterans, but uh, I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's, everybody's kind of mean and they're not going to do anything for nothing. And so, you know, it's just it's really messed up. So I agree. Things suck right now. Everybody is miserable. You ever, you ever think about that? Everybody is just downright miserable. We're not trusting of each other. Everybody is out for themselves. And for a lot of folks, not saying everybody, but for a lot of folks, a lot of folks just pray to just get numb, to just be numb to get through the day. Now, I'm not saying this for everybody. We all find moments of joy in our lives, but at the same time, just take a look at what's out there on social media what's being posted that is a lot of bad vibes dude everybody is just incredibly unhappy and it kind of sucks if i were to do it over again i'd go right back to 1967. if women weren't slut shamed and were actually celebrated for being a slut do you think they'd still play hard to get Yes, because modern women crave validation the same way that they crave $150 makeup. Um, n y yes, because I think that realistically everybody has a guard up and at some point everybody's going to play hard to get. Do you think they would still play hard to get? Yes, it's a part of the game. It's a part of the seduction game. Could it be because women use sex to get power? Of course. A lot of women... They want to be more confident. They want to be more in control of their body. So I don't think that they would be more easy, if that makes sense. Is the main reason women won't, is the main reason women don't want to be easy is because they don't want to be shamed? Or could it be that they don't want to relinquish their sexual power over men? I Yeah, I think they don't want to relinquish their power. They want to have their own power. I think that's why, yeah. You have no power. You think you have power, but you don't. What power do you have? You pay taxes and you have a body count that's on par with the freaking movie Eraser. I mean, for crying out loud, what kind of power is that? I am not trying to be condescending here. I legitimately have no idea what the hell you're talking about. They don't want to relinquish their sexual power. Ladies, you hold everything in your seduction. You push a man until he has no more. So are women more interested in love or power? Power. I want love and power. I want to be in love, but I also want to be in control as well. What would you do with power? Seriously, what would these women do with power? We've already seen what they do when they are in complete control of their bodies and decide to pass themselves around like a bag of Oreos. We see the mess that we're in. What kind of power are you talking about and what would you do once you get it? During the 1960s, where were all the liabilities and consent issues associated with sex like there is today? Syphilis. Why are 33% of today's men lonely and sexless as opposed to back during the free love movement? Uh, the porn addiction. If women had a female nature, wouldn't incels have always been a problem? True, yeah. Yeah, I will say that the corn industry does not help matters much at all. But at the same time, we also have to take into account the fact that we do have so many men who are going through that issue has to do with the fact that social media, dating apps, and this whole hyper fixation on quote unquote women's power has really messed up the dynamic. Maybe it's because the standards have kind of changed. I know a lot of people look for certain things in men, like they want this height, this face, this style. And so Modern women want men that they read in romance novels. Well, the ones that know how to read. They want the types of men that they saw in the Twilight movies back in their tween years. They want those types of men, but they also want them to be submissive. So maybe it's become a lot more selective to this group of men who appeal to women in contrast where it was kind of everybody kind of fit the fit the standard a little more. What is hoflation? I don't know. Hoflation is the downfall of our society. 
Hoflation. Hoflation. <laughs> um, I guess that's like an inflation in hoes. I feel like every woman is a hoe, and if you are, be proud of it. Why am I not surprised? Why do modern men have to work five times harder than their grandfathers did for women 20 times worse than what their grandmothers were? <laughs> because back then, women didn't appreciate themselves and they wanted to be a slave to a man. I mean, maybe... It that makes absolutely no sense at all. They should stop choosing women 20 times worse than their grandmothers. I so where are those women then? Where? Please point me in the right direction. I think that's a good place to start. If women have a female nature, how is hoflation even an issue? Hoflation is just a term. We have divine femininity. Oh, maybe. Every time I hear the word divine femininity, I feel like a brain cell is giving up hope. It's the brain cell's not dying, but the brain cell is praying to be put on life support so another brain cell could come in and pull the plug. That is what it feels like in my head when I hear the term divine femininity. Okay, it could be having to do with like inflation. You know, things cost a lot more now. Luxury lifestyles are in. Everyone wants to be living that social media lifestyle. And so, you know, they want to have a man who can support that lifestyle. When has the luxury lifestyle never been in? There are millions upon millions of people out there who fantasize about living a luxurious lifestyle. And that's the way it has been since like the dawn of civilization. Without having to work. And I think it was more normalized just to be a housewife and not to go on trips and to get fancy cars and stuff. So maybe it was more. What good are fancy cars and trips? What good are they? What ultimately do the cars and the trips leave you with? I'll give you a hint. It starts with nothing and that's how it ends. Just a different lifestyle, so that's why. We are way more superior than you guys. We, without, without men, without women, men wouldn't exist. And without men, women wouldn't exist. It's almost as if we have a symbiotic relationship to keep the species going. <laughs> I know, who would have thunk it, but I'm not surprised. You wear bunny ears, so you obviously failed first grade biology. You guys are actually nothing. <laughs> because without us, you're useless. You wouldn't even be born. And without us, you'd have no one to give you a nightly fix of self-worth. Okay. And all men, whether you were with them for 10 years or not, will cheat and lie. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Why are today's women so filled with hatred towards men, yet they will still engage with men for attention and resources? Because they're emotional wrecks. Modern women have been encouraged to just live off their emotions while considering anything that's logical or reasonable as an assault on their very being. Because women are desperate sometimes. Not me though. Because everybody needs to survive. Everyone needs to survive, period. But I think it's scarier for women nowadays just because there's a lot of different energies, like male energies, and as a woman, I can say I choose the bear any day. Okay, well, the bear don't choose you, sister. The bear is never going to be that desperate for a meal. Oh! And that's going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button. Ring the notification bell, leave a couple of comments, and share this video so we can give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much to the It's Complicated channel for its awesome content. You are truly a certified gent, sir. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.